back off. that's what's happening to all of us we're realizing that in the instant of coming out here it, it's been such a long time and our central nervous systems are like oh my god um, <laughs> it, 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 to describe the journey is is, is practically impossible I, I wouldn't be here meeting all of these amazing people <laughs> you need to go backstage <laughs> I mean it's insane it's exhausting <laughs> um, and and to be in this kind of company that, that that some that have been there from the beginning and that continue to um, emerge and I'm gonna just stop talking because I want to make it about um, you doing great everybody else <laughs> yeah <laughs> Emily, Emily jump in because obviously as the armor you you've really brought a fantastic experience. I was having a little bit of a freak out that I've tried to keep under control because Today, like 10 minutes ago, was my first time ever meeting Amy, and she doesn't know that that I, I I'm freaking out inside. And my dream, I know, I John, is to have a seat There's a reason I'm a armor and Pelimoto. Um, so that's gonna be happening, right? Sure. Yeah. So. I wouldn't promise anything. Yeah, I'm gonna make her a helmet. Good. Um, but I, I think I, I think I, I, I was asked, um, how is it that I convey uh, authority without ever taking off my helmet? And I, I think, I think that it's probably because I never take off my helmet, quite frankly. Um, and it's also definitely because of good editing, because um, especially when we were first, Dave and I were just talking um, a little while ago about those first few episodes when we were trying to find. Um, the language of these characters, um, and Pedro knows this, when we were when we were all helmeted and we were moving around in this new territory, in these new sets, and and um, trying to see, especially through a through the frame of a camera, you know, when you're only seeing part of this character's body, you're not seeing the whole body. What is it that translates? What kind of movement are you are you reading? What emotions are you reading? And it was really a collaborative effort because I knew what was going on in my head and what I quickly learned for the armorer is that less is more. And, you know, I remember definitely growing up, my father um, was a military man. He was in the army, he was six foot six, um, very strong man, very kind, very loving. But the thing that was most frightening to me was when I had done something wrong and I knew it and I would go talk to my dad and I, I didn't, I, I knew he was gonna say something about it and I was just waiting for him to say it and he said nothing at all and he just looked at me and I was just waiting for him to say the thing and that was the most terrifying thing of all and that was the thing that made me look in, inward and think, you know, have that self-reflection and think about what it was that I needed to learn and think about what it was that I needed to process and what I should have done differently. And I sort of think that that's, um, that's one of the ways that the armorer functions. Um, she doesn't say a whole lot and she doesn't, I mean, except when she runs across some stormtroopers that need to be taught a lesson. She doesn't, 
do a whole lot. Um, but she has yeah. daddy issues, is what you're saying. I'm not saying anything. This is more. This is so, more. Emily, I, I can see that you're making up for lost time with uh, being silent. Um, uh, 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 <laughs> we are going to shift to Giancarlo. Tell us where we left off with the with the story, so that we can kind of get everybody up to speed as we start We're to approach. We're looking at I me mean, like she asked me a question or something. We're looking past. Okay, okay, okay great. I'm like. Well, I'll first say, <laughs> don't get scared. Hey. Oh. It's an honor and, and uh, uh, an utmost pleasure to be working with visionaries. And I'll first say, you know, you have something I want. <laughs> and what, what that is, is passion for this franchise. What that is, is wonder and, and uh, amazement at what's been happening. I'm grateful to David Filoni, I'm grateful to John Favreau, and I'm grateful to Rick and Kathleen and Disney for having to allow me to be a part of this world. If you're here, you love Star Wars. If you're here, you love Star Wars. <laughs> yes, you do. Why do you love it? You ever thought about it? Great storytelling, great action, great characters who are involved in something that is real for a purpose. It is the hero and the heroine's journey that matters. It is that you can see yourselves in the armorer. You can see yourselves in Mando. You can see yourselves in Moff Gideon. It is a wonderful place to be in this childlike wonder in this franchise. So I left off in this place of terror. I left off in this place of, of not knowing where Moff Gideon would go. I left off in a place of vulnerability. You hadn't seen Moff be vulnerable before. Wondering what is going to happen to me. This is a wonderful place to be, a wonderful springboard into season three. I'm grateful to be joining. I'm grateful to be here. And only you can supply yourself with the patience to find out what <laughs> happens. <laughs> oh my God. You are going to love it. So Amy, you were, you were noticing that there was an opportunity here to tell us a little bit about Paley because I have to say, I think everybody would agree that every time you're on screen, everybody's laughing. So, right? So, tell us a little bit about how fun that character is. Oh, they're laughing because I memorize, I memorize the lines, that's why. I don't know what I'm saying. All I'm thinking about are the lines. There's no levels, there's nothing. It's no eyebrows, a mullet, an uncomfortable costume, and all I'm thinking about are the lines. And then, I have a question or I improvise, and they're like, oh, Amy, they wouldn't say that in space. And I'm like, okay, would they say grandpa? They're like, yeah, they'd say grandpa in space. You can say grandpa. <laughs> when, when they, <laughs> David and John explain the scene to me, it still doesn't make any sense. And they're like, it doesn't matter. They're looking at the spaceship behind you anyway. And I'm like, why did I memorize all this stuff? So I'm getting laughs, and I don't even know why I'm getting a laugh. <laughs> but you work on sand, and the sand kicks up in your eyes, so you can't really wear contact lenses. Any other questions? <laughs> dream come true, honest, dream come true. <laughs> but I'm here. Oh. So Katie, mm -hmm. your character is emerging even bigger than we can imagine as this next season approaches. I know you can't say a lot, but say what you can. <laughs> wow. I've gotten really good at standing here and going like this. <laughs> you know, I've, I've played this character now for almost 10 years of my life, and, and um, <laughs> I mean, she's amazing. Yet you haven't so, aged at all. I know, thank, thankfully. Um, but it's it's one of those things where I never dreamed that she would come to be this much of a part of my life and of your lives. Um, I, but I'm just so grateful to these amazing guys for, for letting me do this and Kathleen. And um, I'm so excited for you guys to see this season because I've seen it. It's crazy. <laughs> That's all I can say. That's legitimately all I can say. <laughs> That's it, because I always make a joke that like someone will swoop down and take me away and you'll never see me again. 
but they're here now, so I'll just fall off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, we're all excited to be back here. Uh, we've got we've got a lot of our cast here. We've got a room full of people who've been there from the beginning. The audience, the fans, thank you. And and so we figure what a great opportunity to bring something to show you because we got everybody here. So for the first time ever, we're going to be showing you a teaser for The Mandalorian season.